Welcome to a new vlog, a very exciting video for today because we are taking a look at the new Joulescope and yep that's correct even though the original Joulescope had awesome specs and it was very affordable Matt Liberty the creator of Joulescope in the spirit of a true engineer worked on this to make it even better and launched the new Joulescope which is model number JS220 this retails for exactly the same price as the previous model which was probably not easy to do considering the general status of the world we live in right now now for those of you that don't know what a joule scope is let me briefly mention what this instrument can do it can measure current voltage uh, it calculates power energy and charge and it does that through an auto raging shunt ammeter that supports an amazing dynamic range which is needed for analyzing the power usage of modern electronics I've been very lucky to have such an instrument because they did send me the original model for review and I've been using it ever since to measure a bunch of IoT projects. It's one of my favorite tools in the lab because of how accurate, reliable and easy it is to use. Now they are accepting pre-orders for the new Joulescope on Joulescope.com with the official launch date on November 3rd. So if you're looking to get one, it would be a good idea to get your order in as I think uh, given how uh, popular and how nice this instrument is I think the first patch will be gone pretty quickly and here is a small you might think insignificant detail but Joulescope also comes with its own evaluation kit which will allow you to measure real-world signals with the Joulescope that's not only awesome for content creators like myself because I don't have to set up complicated experiments on my workbench but also for real world customers which need to evaluate such a product or maybe make sure that the instrument is functioning as advertised upon receiving it or maybe just comparing the measurements you get from the Joule scope with another similar instrument by plugging in the same evaluation kit so thumbs up to Joule scope for offering this EVK on their online shop and trust me I encourage you to compare it with other existing products there is only one conclusion to that the Joule scope will provide higher performance for a lower cost but before we continue with the review of this tool let me just quickly mention the sponsor of this video pcbway.com a professional pcb manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times right now they're running their fifth annual pcb design contest so if you have some pcb designs that you would like to submit why not do it for a chance to win one of the juicy cash prizes you could also try them out for many of their other services like 3d printing cnc machining and manufacturing services in general check out their website linked below now let's start with a comparison between the two models to the left we have the specs of the newer gs220 to the right the specs of the previous model the gs uh, 110 we notice a bump in the ADC performance with an increase of effective bits plus an increase in bandwidth we get more general purpose inputs we get a new trigger in and out function a new software controlled fuse a new uh, open source driver which gives you the ability to automate test measurement setups using your favorite software we also get a bump in the dynamic range the measurement range has been extended to plus or minus 3 amps sustain and plus or minus 10 amps pulse typical resolution has been improved and is now 0.5 nanoamps and the same can be said about the voltage measurement which has its range increased to plus or minus 15 volts so pretty much a better instrument across the board with almost every spec improved the jewel scope comes in this black EVA hard shell carry case and inside you'll get the jewel scope uh, plus its accessories as you'll notice the jewel scope got a new uh, enclosure this is a uh, different uh, size from the previous model the new model also seems to be using a different model of uh, uh, banana jacks but they are located on the on the same side and on the other side we have the uh, GPIO ports uh, the uh, new uh, BNC port for trigger in and out and the USB type C interface which is a pleasant surprise among the accessories uh, in included with the unit we get an allen key to be used with removing uh, or exchanging the uh, front panel uh, boards uh, we get a uh, USB type C cable and the uh, the GPIO DuPont connection wires and a uh, side note here um, you always include the USB cable with your product because that saves a lot of resources uh, on customer support where the user might plug in whatever he has around and the product is not working as expected because of a bad USB cable the ones that come with the Joule scope feel like uh, 
high quality cables they're uh, pretty nice optionally you can also purchase uh, this evaluation kit which i have here i believe this retails for something like 99 bucks and it basically contains a set of resistors and capacitors which are uh, switched with the help of mosfets to generate different uh, dynamic loads these are under the control of uh, this microcontroller which is a raspberry pi pico microcontroller and um Given the current global situation, it makes a lot of sense to use one of these micros for the simple fact that they are affordable and available. This EVK uh, can run MicroPython and it's got like its own GitHub repository, its own open source. Uh, it's open source and it's got its own documentation. And you can control it over USB to run different voltages and activate different loads on the output and uh, take input from the GPIOs and it's really quite nice, but I won't go into too much details on, on the EVK itself. It's not the scope of this video. I'll just provide some links in the description of the video so you can check it out. So let's fire up the dual scope and capture some waveforms with the help of this evaluation kit. In terms of operating system support for the dual scope app, we get Windows 10 and 11, we get Mac OS and Linux and uh, uh, I've been told Linux is a work in progress but will be available before the launch date of November 3rd. And let's not forget about the open source drivers which enable you to write your own app, for example in Python, to control and extract data from Julescope. Since I've been a user of the first generation Julescope and its app since the beginning, I can tell you from, from my personal experience that it's probably the best measurement instrument app that I've ever used. It's simple and very effective in helping you to get the job done. It has been constantly improved and you get updates over the air quite often. And if you're using the Julescope like I am once every couple of months, you are guaranteed to find a newer improved version of the app every time you fire it up, which is a pleasant experience for me because that usually means not only bugs have been fixed, but also new features introduced. There is a newer beta version of the app, version 0.10, which you'll need to install for the uh, JS220 co compatibility. And I have already installed it here. As you can see, we're greeted with the usual Julescope interface with a graph of current and voltage over time. Here's a nice feature of the app. If we enable uh, all of our views, uh, scope, GPIO, multimeter, we have the ability to separate these panels individually. Uh, we can also see them all at the same time, have them docked or undocked, navigate them with tabs. So there's lots of flexibility in how you can arrange this uh, graphical user interface. As we observe, the EVK is running at one volt output right now, and it is switching various resistor loads, which generate these current peaks on the output and the Julescope is capturing those. Now, if I stop the capture process, we can zoom in on any of these points. And this is the beauty of such a device with a very wide dynamic range, which enables it to capture and display high currents right next to low currents. So you could be having your microcontroller in sleep, taking just microamps and then waking up, connecting to Wi-Fi with peaks of excess of one amp and you could be capturing all of that with the Julescope. You could be logging that, that data and just figuring out how much energy was consumed within a given time window or identify issues like voltage brownouts, which might be caused by, by these uh, sudden current peaks. This would also uh, enable you to estimate battery life for that particular device. And here is another interesting feature. The EVK can run this test to generate a bipolar current, showcasing the full quadrant capability of the dual scope with its plus and minus input range, meaning that you'll be able to visualize both input and output current into the uh, device under test. The UI also uh, contains everything that you could ask from such an instrument, like you want to see the, uh, that charge accumulator over a given runtime, you got it right here. You want to see the energy, you can switch that to display energy instead of charge. You get current, voltage and energy uh, display and all of the usual stuff like um, that you find on, on a time series graph. You get mean, max, average, delta T, all of that stuff. And it's just very intuitive. It's a snappy interface. If you know any uh, test measurement instrument that has a better interface than this, then I would be happy to hear about it in the comments below. Because in my personal experience, measurement instrument apps are typically sluggish, full of bugs, not very intuitive. And, and I just hate the fact that most manufacturers just base their software on that set of uh, uh, LabVIEW drivers and that LabVIEW general architecture. 
In terms of the hardware, we got a fairly similar construction to the uh, previous model with a, uh, a front and back panel made out of uh, FR4 PCBs. But here is something that I don't particularly like. They have changed the uh, connector on the uh, front panel connector. Uh, so, for example, if you have uh, the older front panel like I have here, the USB one, it won't be compatible with the newer model just because it uses a different uh, connector. But to be fair, I have to mention a couple of things. I do have a very early beta unit of the JS110, so I'm not sure maybe the front panel connector got changed before the public release of the JS110, but I just don't have that version. And the second thing I'd like to mention is that since they've switched to this uh, newer uh, enclosure, the uh, older style front panel uh, wouldn't be uh, mechanically compatible with the newer enclosure anyway. So that's a bummer, but it would be nice if they could keep compatibility of uh, front panels for any future versions that they might release. Build quality as expected is superb, like soldering looks perfect. There's no flux residue or anything like that. I only see high quality uh, parts on this uh, PCB. If we take a look at the back, we notice the isolation barrier between the measurement part and the uh, USB side. Running the show, we have a new microcontroller, the AT Sam S70Q20, which is a beefy Cortex M7 that operates up to 300 MHz. Now, this is an upgrade over the previous model, which had a Cortex M4 MCU plus a uh, FPGA on the USB side, and this will no doubt save cost and reduce complexity of the system. We now have a uh, single FPGA uh, on the measurement side and this uh, will be sampling data from the uh, two dual channel ADCs which are placed right next to it. These are ADS9226 16-bit uh, dual channel uh, SAR ADCs with up to 2 meg samples per second and because we have two of them I think they might be running these interleaved to effectively double the uh, sampling speed to ensure they get enough samples. On the input side we noticed the uh, different uh, shunt resistors uh, and the uh, selection MOSFETs. Uh, the part number on these uh, MOSFETs at least on these three uh, bigger ones is CSD16327 and from what I could tell the main feature of these uh, is the uh, very low RDS sound and very low gate charge which would effectively allow you to switch them on very fast to minimize the time it takes to switch ranges and when we start measuring nanoamps we of course uh, start seeing guard traces being implemented on the PCB. There's also a, like a large number of uh, precision op-amps which are spread all around the uh, measurement side of the PCB and, and these are no doubt used to condition the signal before feeding it into the uh, ADCs which are then sampled by the FPGA. Data is then exchanged between the FPGA and the Cortex M7 microcontroller using a couple of uh, digital isolators which are located here and there. Power is provided from the uh, USB side to the measurement side with the help of this um, uh, transformer here and the circuitry around it to ensure galvanic isolation. So the general feeling that I get from this new design is that they have simplified the design by integrating and consolidating. They're using a single FPJ and a single microcontroller and yet they improve performance by choosing better spec parts with higher performance uh, for these new uh, main building blocks. I've got the unit back together and there's also a few things I would like to mention before giving you my final thoughts on this instrument. All joule scopes come fully calibrated from the factory which means you can trust the measurements as being very accurate and there is an optional NIST traceable calibration that includes additional testing and calibration performed by an external accredited calibration laboratory should you need that in your line of work. Which brings me to the final conclusion. This instrument provides extremely good specs, it's built with high quality parts, comes with a very good PC app which is compatible with all major operating systems and is free to use with a full feature set, no license or anything like that and you get all of this for $1000. May I remind you that similar instruments from the big name manufacturers have price tags in excess of 10k. Same as with the previous generations, 
the Joule scope is revolutionary and I have no doubt more and more people are getting a Joule scope and why wouldn't they? The world is heading towards IoT and low power devices and if you want to design those properly you need to analyze their energy usage. Why should you pay in excess of 10k when you can get the Joule scope for 1k? Why get some Joule scope competitor which doesn't have the same performance accuracy but imposes some form of premium licensing scheme which would force you to pay extra to get the full feature set? It doesn't make any sense. People will just get the Joule scope because it's a better instrument and a better deal. But same as always, I'm open to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know if you already own a Joule scope, if you've been happy with using it or if you know of a better alternative that's on the market. And if you're looking to get a new Joule scope, check out the links I've placed in the description of the video. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time.